failing edges which are congenitally corrected to position. Uh, I have um, uh, asked Dr. Delmo Walter to compile the data of our unit uh, on the transplantation and also I would like to mention that of course the cases were some or many of them operated by my former co-worker Professor Wong and also the assist device program which I'm touching then later on um, has been now at least those cases uh, handled by Professor Alexi and more recently by Dr. Hübler. And uh, of course, most of the things that I'm mentioning now had been discussed already during the meeting. Um, it certainly is uh, an important fact that we now see that many of those patients reach adulthood and in the corrected adult position, as we just have heard, there are many patients who are at least approaching maybe a, a normal life expectancy, maybe not quite. And uh, of course, the um, atrial uh, switch uh, repair cases, mustard or sending, um, have been considered for systemic vent uh, uh, ventricular failure for now for a long time, but surprisingly enough, the number of cases that have been presenting with um, actually failing a systemic ventricle has been limited or even small, considering, for instance, that while I was working in Hanover, we did like 500 mustard operations and the early results were excellent. And everybody was wondering what happens to those patients now 30 or 40 years later. These 30 or 40 years are over and uh, the number of cases that have been presented for transplantation or anything else is rather small, I must say. Um, of course, the anatomic correction has been introduced only like maybe like 30 or also 30, 35 years ago, and we do not know what the long-term results of those will be. Um, and I assume that for the majority of the patients with corrected transposition, but of course my previous talker knows this better than I, um, we probably have a limited life expectancy on the whole. Um, again, uh, the incidence of systemic ventricular failure to a follow-up is not known with certainty. Some series have been presented with like 61% systemic ventricular failure at 25 years or others better results have a, like 85% survival at 32 years. And we will see how this goes on. The surgical options are limited. Surgery on the tricuspid valve or the systemic AV valve is generally insufficient. We just have heard about the, uh, the double switch um, operation. Also what Dr. Raska obviously has presented to you with some initially quite uh, good results, but there have been some later follow-up studies that have been less uh, exciting by Roger May or Porter. Um, and um, um, this uh, technique, as we, I, I was surprised and I uh, was really uh, impressed by your data with the banding. I think this is probably a, a good concept if we can follow it. Heart transplantation is the prefer preferred theoretical therapeutic option, but as I mentioned, uh, like to mention, it is theoretical. Lack of donor organs is increasing. A number of donor organs in this country or at, at also in other European countries is going down. And also, the literature is rather scarce with reports on transplantation. Of course, there are some technical considerations for heart transplantation, um, alterations in atrial anatomy, other abnormalities, and of course also the uh, specific features of the uh, 
dislocated or differently located uh, the great meshes. Uh, the, um, the concept after atrial switch operation certainly is to create a new atrial septum, mostly from the donor atrial tissue and by joining the corresponding great vessels where, uh, for which it is necessary to have extensive mobilization and longer segments of post pulmonary artery and the aorta of the donor heart. As shown here, <coughs> that means also for a corrected transposition you need just longer segments of pulmonary artery and the aorta. This shows the creation of a new atrial septum mostly from, or preferably from donor heart tissue, which in general is sufficient. Uh, what we have been also using in all those cases. And of course, it's also possible to, to create any kind of um, atrial tunnel for every situation, also for uh, like a dextrocardia or sinus inversus. It is not necessary, in my opinion, as it was done in Munich, to introduce uh, glute halter fixed patch material. Uh, I think it can be created with atrial tissue of the donor organ. And, <coughs> and I think this is a good, good paper for the technique <coughs> as um, presented by Bruce Wright from Stanford on the a technique on, of uh, transpo uh, transplantation in uh, collected transposition, uh, similar as the one from Trento. And also, uh, I think it is very important, as it is said here, uh, to properly orient the donor heart and prevent any kind of cable switching or kinking during transplantation. This, of course, is a question of dimensioning uh, and uh, proper technique. <coughs> now, I looked into the uh, International uh, Registry of uh, heart, uh, heart and Lung Transplantation, and I must say the data are rather scarce. There's only a s summary uh, report on congenital heart disease that was underwent uh, transplantation. And as you can see, there's only a, a, a very brief mentioning of 10% mustard, uh, which does not give any data on, the, on this group uh, isolated. Now our experience, uh, you see this is our total experience with uh, 1,800 heart transplantations and another 100 combined heart lung transplantations. And the assisted by the children, 179 pediatric transplants. Um, and uh, these are the uh, detailed here the like heart transplants, heart lung. Um, and for the for the heart transplants in, in the children, in general we aim at having a some, somewhat larger donor organ, um, which is uh, shown in this graph. And these are the the cases in the pediatric uh, program. That means mostly are dilated cardiomyopathy or myocarditis. Um, and there are 45 cases of congenital heart disease of a variety of uh, diagnoses. And among those, there were 14 transposition cases, nine after previous mustard or standing operation, and five with corrected transposition. And uh, I must say, I must confess, we always saw one case who, with a corrected transposition, who eventually um, received a combined heart lung transplantation. And I should have uh, added this also. Uh, so, in total, there are not 14, but 15 such cases. Now, the results overall are somewhat. Uh, for the entire pro uh, pediatric program, is they are fairly fairly comparable with other groups or 
rather good, but among the pediatric transplant uh, cohort, you can see that those that were transplanted with congenital heart disease had a much higher early mortality, um, going down to 53% survival at 10, 12 years. But eventually they uh, approximate the survival curve of the uh, cardiomyopathy group, which is shown here with 68% at 12, 13 years. Uh, the, the patients with the, uh, the transposition uh, uh, um, disease uh, uh, defects, um, they were in general somewhat older, uh, mean 12.2, range 1.3 to 27 years. And the interval between the initial surgery and uh, transplantation in those that had undergone um, some, some uh, usually atrial switch operation uh, was uh, uh, between zero and 16 years. And these are all the cases except the one I just mentioned, which we have added also. Um, among those patients, uh, uh, quite a number died either early on or up to 11 years after the transplantation. And presently there are alive five patients uh, between six and 16 years after the transplantation. Uh, the means is certainly somewhat less optimistic as in the entire congenital and uh, even more so in the entire pediatric group. You can see this is a, a cumulative survival curve after 15 and up to 18 or 19 years, 35.7%. Uh, which is not so much worse than in the entire transplant group where we expect that after 20 years, we may have a survival of somewhere between 20 and 25%. Surprisingly enough, I must say the reports that we found in the literature on transplantation for transposition complexes are rather scarce. And uh, I was really surprised to see that we have at least among those, uh, the largest number of cases. Um, also, they mostly like from Canada and from England, from France. Only one report from the United States. Um, the results are not uh, given in every of the paper at long term. Um, but there have been some, let's say, common mentioning of risk factors. Uh, one certainly, pulmonary hypertension. Certainly pulmonary hypertension obviously seems to be the uh, most common uh, risk factor. And of course there was a, a few cases that failed due to technical problems. I'd like to add here our experience with assist devices in this patient group. We have used the Berlin Heart extracorporeal system with uh, transposition uh, complexes in the early times, uh, in the 1990s, or uh, also after 2000, uh, in a few cases, mostly as a rescue uh, procedure. And I must say there were no long-term survivors, and none of them made it to a heart transplantation. There has been one uh, bridge to transplantation with the Berlin Heart Incor system, um, and there are now two cases that we defined um, permanent implantation with the hardware pump in two cases which I will show you in detail. You see like this patient, 24-year-old man, had a standing procedure and he had uh, increasing heart failure and 
uh, was then responsible for heart transplantation, but he failed before that and uh, we implanted a, a pump. And initially we thought we had to, bring, uh, to implant two pumps, uh, but uh, as you can see here the, the ring that was already sewn onto the apex of the pulmonary ventricle. Um, and, uh, but eventually then it, it showed up that the heart was well supported with one pump on the anterior wall of the systemic ventricle. Um, and this patient, 59 year old uh, patient with a um, LPGA, dextrocardia, DSG, and so on. And um, he also was in end stage failure. So we implanted a, an assist device of the same type into him. You can see here the this device here, the heart rate pump, from the diaphragmal facet of the systemic ventricle. And you can see the uh, graft of the device going to the aorta. Now, when I can conclude this brief presentation, I think uh, what you can say is um, patients which congenitally corrected transposition and those with who underwent ATIOS wish eventually may face systemic ventricular failure due to the reasons that have been discussed certainly quite extensively at the symposium. Uh, the, sur the surgical options are probably limited, but I think there's some hope from the, also from the presentation we just heard before mine. Heart transplantation is a preferred option, but uh, only rarely uh, feasible. It's certainly somewhat uh, more dem technically demanding than a regular heart transplantation, which by itself, of course, is a simple operation. And there are some uh, uh, special situations and uh, features uh, that may must be considered. Uh, however, I think these are no uh, uh, characteristics that should create major technical problems. <coughs> and I think uh, except for elevated pulmonary vascular resistance, there are no criteria that would preclude heart transplantation. Uh, certainly a pulmonary vascular resistance of more than six wood units must be considered a, con a contraindication. And of course, in some cases, theoretically, at least heart lung, combined heart lung transplantation uh, can be considered in this group. As I mentioned, we have two cases, one uh, child that lived six years after the transplant and the other a patient who lived six months. Um, and I think um, for the future, as in any kind of other end-stage heart disease, we now will consider permanent mechanical assist systems as the probably most proper and also available uh, solution for many of those patients. Thank you.